Ooh, Sailor Moon is so cool, and Mercury is a badass. And hello, I'm Ember. I mean, I'm Lux. Wow, really fangirling that badly. <laughs> well, Sailor Moon was just so awesome, I forgot who I was. <laughs> All right, I'm taking my name back. Thank you. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, Season 3, Episodes 31 and 32. And as I said just at the intro there, Sailor Mercury is a badass, jumping out of a window several stories high and transforming and landing in the pool. Holy freaking hell! <laughs> 13 stories to be exact, and let's not forget that she took out the security camera with a pen in the meantime. And this is one of the many reasons I like Sailor Mercury. <laughs> so, yeah, these episodes were really cool. I'm getting really invested. Sailor Mercury is just awesome. Some more stuff going on with the villains, and in these episodes, they actually said their levels. So I think you might be happy about that, or... <laughs> yes, that they're reiterating and going, yes, these are the much more powerful characters, so we should be having more difficulty. Because it always seemed unfair that they went level 78 and then down to level 40. But now we go up to level 202 and 404. Mm-hmm. Oh, isn't 404 an internet error? It's been so long since I've run into it. <laughs> Pretty sure. Let's see, um, I actually liked the little bit of romantic tension that was going on there during Usagi and, I keep wanting to call him Darren, because I think that was his American name. <laughs> Darian and Mamoru. Yeah, so some very nice tension in his apartment. And Chibiusa did a very nice job of manipulating them into making up. Mm-hmm. And also they're very talented to turn that wonderful clay sculpture she had into... That Holy Grail thing. Also, I, I really like how Indiana Jones portrayed what a Holy Grail would actually look like. It would be a potter's cup, because Jesus wasn't a rich man. <laughs> but if we're talking about the Crystal Empire here, hmm. Well, you went wrong series. <laughs> or it could Neo be both Tokyo. of them at this point. Yeah, Neo <laughs> Tokyo. It could be a fancy cup. <laughs> but they both have lots of crystals. Crystals everywhere. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's even in the title. A small thing they skip on uh, transforming that rather plain vase into that version of um, the Holy Grail. In the manga, Yusagi has to go out and actually buy the buttons and gemstones at a craft shop. It's just one small panel of her being there going, Okay, I thought of it, so why am I the one who has to go to the store and get this stuff? I also like the way they portray characters talking off screen to other characters sometimes, especially when Usagi has a reaction. They just have this cute little bunny having her reactions in a uh, speech bubble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's a nice little touch. We have a lot more emotion and characterization in this series so far. I'm like, this is like so much better than the first one. And I'm thinking even story-wise, because like uh, the original author way back when probably even wrote this better than her first version because she got better at writing. So, of course, it shows in this version of the series because they're following the manga more closely. They're following the manga very closely. Huh. So, speaking of which, what are the differences in this episode? Well, that was the main thing, is they cut out the single panel of Yusagi having to run to the craft store. And Mercury's 13-story exit and dive into the pool is way cooler in animation. Also, Haruka and Mitru do not get grabbed by the possessed students and then escape. They make that comment about, well, I guess we can't stay at this school anymore, and then go ahead and go all badass. They don't get grabbed. And also, that's the first time we've seen their transformations in full. So what do you think of their transformations? I thought they were pretty nice. I liked both of their transformations, and I liked how in this set of episodes with all the scouts' transformations, only Sailor Moon and Chibi Moon had flowers. Previously, all the scouts have had flowers in the background. Mm. I'm just really liking the animation style in this season, and everything just is really feeling really nice to me, and the characterization and stuff like that, I'm like, this is a really good series! <laughs> And in the next episode, I'm like, finally we get a bad guy who's actually so strong that nothing the inner scouts do, including Silly Moon, does anything to them. <laughs> Thinking because she seems to be like one of those energy absorbing bad guys. <laughs> yeah, so instead of taking the hit, she absorbed the energy of it for both Sailor Moon's Moon Spiral Heart Attack and Chibi Moon's Pink Sugar Heart Attack. 
And speaking of Chibi Moon, that reminds me of the new outro we have. God, that's so saccharine. Ah, oh, it was so sweet and cute and ah. Uh. <laughs> I know. I'm like, are, am I watching the same series? This is. <laughs> This is like in the Dragon Ball Z movie where Gohan eats the fruit that gives him weird visions and he starts walking around through this whole ultra cutesy, you know, hallucination. It just mm -hmm. doesn't fit with anything else. I was like, oh my god. Every time it came on, I was like, Hur! god, that's cute. <laughs> For those who actually listen to all of our episodes, you know that I'm not affected much by Fluttershy anymore. I guess I lied, because this is like Fluttershy levels of cute. <laughs> well, you come to expect it from Fluttershy. You weren't expecting it from the Sailor Moon Crystal outro. Going back to the previous episode really quick, because I think it happened just at the end where they hinted that, oh, look who's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, you know, if I hadn't known that she was coming back, thanks to the intro and all the research I had to do for art stuff, I might have actually been, ooh! <laughs> yeah, cause didn't she, like, die or something in the previous seasons? Yes, but this is Sailor Moon. Death is only permanent to villains. <laughs> and not even all villains, because, you know, Beryl was reborn. And I just like that touch of her coming back and how they do the reveal on it. Even though, you like, you know it's coming, it's like, oh, that's really nice. I like it. And then they introduce her into the science like well that's appropriate science lab <laughs> but i'm not quite sure it's like at the beginning there did she actually not know she was a scout and then she was awakened as a scout again so did she like die and get reincarnated in some way or was this person always on earth ready to awaken to be a scout because that's what i'm trying to figure out like how does this timeline work the timeline doesn't work but she was reborn but the thing is, since she is a descendant of the god of time, she could have been reborn before she actually died. Thank you, time travel. Excuse me for a moment where I figure out how to put my brain back together. So, plenty of good action. This episode seemed to be mostly focused on Sailor Moon trying to like, Why can't we just meet them and talk to them? <laughs> Why do they have to be so separate from us? Yeah, the whole time you just hear the song going, why can't we be friends? <laughs> and just that villain is like, oh, hey, we finally got a villain that transformed. <laughs> yes, because so far none of the Witches 5 have really done that inside the series, even though the first one, the fire one, did it inside the manga. I really like the way the action played out. I like the, we finally get the villain who did the, oh, I absorb your powers, ha ha ha. And then we get the whole, I sense that our fellow scouts are in danger. We must do something. And then Mamoru is like, wait a minute. I feel a little disturbance in the force. Someone's awakening. <laughs> oh no, the force awakens. Sorry, couldn't help it. <laughs> <laughs> and then boom, I destroy the evil villain. That voice, it can't be. <laughs> and she just smiles and goes, hello, I'm back. What did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you died. It didn't stick. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And thankfully, this is one of the Outer Scouts who is kindly inclined towards the Inner Scouts because Neptune and Uranus were reacting to Setsuna being in danger, not the Inner Scouts. Mm. And I happened to watch this one all the way through after the credits as well to the preview of next episode. I'm like, oh, so we're finally getting a new outfit for Sailor Moon. Took you long enough. <laughs> I mean, how many power upgrades has she had already and still no new outfit? <laughs> well, the difference between getting an outfit upgrade in a manga and an outfit upgrade in an animation, you know, you still have to draw the manga. In the animation, once you've drawn a transformation sequence, you just recycle, rinse and repeat. In order to have a new outfit, you have to animate a whole new transformation sequence. Hmm. So, speaking of whole new, what are the differences between this and the manga? There was a bit more exposition in the manga, where things were more spelled out, where in the episode, everyone was allowed more to intuit and figure things out on their own. So, I actually liked, on both episodes, the variances between the original and the manga. I actually liked uh, the changes that they made to the animation. 
Hmm. Yeah, because it seems like they're streamlining things. Because they're getting rid of stuff like we don't need to the moon to go off and fetch stuff. We don't need this. We don't need that. It's like little things they get rid of instead of like other manga to anime translations where like you just you basically got rid of an entire character arc right there. Why did you do that? <laughs> uh, or what happens to the poor guy who did love Hina and Nagima? Every time they turn his stuff into anime, they completely botch it because they're like, we don't need his story. No one liked that anyways. They just want the pretty girls. We'll put them up on screen. Yeah. Yeah, that's not how it works. But Makoto got to be a lot smarter about the plants in the anime. And where she got the kitchen knife from was much clearer in the anime. It was a smaller knife. It was in the manga. She has like a big butcher's knife. <laughs> and it's not clear where she grabbed it from. I mean, she loves to cook. So obviously it's going to be in the apartment. But I liked how it was more of that was the nearest weapon because they were having tea and there were sliced apples on the table. So the mm. knife was right there. It also reminded me of two things, really. One, in episode 31, there was this weird thing where they just showed a hand. I can't remember exactly what scene it is, but they basically just showed a hand to indicate something. And I'm like, what? what's that hand for? Was she like holding her hand out or something? It was actually a person pointing in a direction. I'm like... Yeah, you don't do it that way because the hand is not indicating anything. It's a palm up facing out, which usually indicates something's going to be put in that hand. If you want to show someone pointing, you actually show their entire arm indicating a direction. <laughs> that's the only thing that's um, in the animation direction that I was like, that's odd. Why did they do that? Of course, in the following episode, they do it right, and they have some person indicating that's the direction you go. <laughs> I also like the little touch where they showed that the energies are different colors from each of the scouts. Mm-hmm is all the energy that's been taken from all the humans has been very uniform. So not only does this show that the scouts are different from ordinary humans, it shows that they are different from each other. And speaking of small animation things, when Furu and, uh, I'm going to butcher her name, uh, the other, the girl that he was with from the mineralogy club, when mm -hmm. they're on the train together, there is this section right by her neck that's very lightly animated and it really just stood out to me as not belonging with the rest of the background. But when they changed the angle of how they were looking out, it then suddenly matched with the background. Hmm. I didn't pick up on that at all. <laughs> well, I didn't pick up on your hand thing, so we're even. Yeah. So to me, it was just this weird shot of it's just a hand with palm out. And I'm like, okay. Um, ah, I remember is when Amy walks in and asks the, for directions to where she's supposed to go and the lady at the desk goes okay it's this way and her hand all they have is a frame of her hand out from like the wrist to the tips of the fingers and i'm like what is she asking for something what huh <laughs> when like a smart shot would have been a they would have stayed with the white shot and just had her move her arm to point in the direction of that's where you go <laughs> yes but thanks for going back to that episode because that was another minor difference was that the Deathbuster witch was actually waiting for Amy in that room rather than Amy seeing the miniature universe first and then being startled by her. Like I said, I like that the way it played out animated better. That was nice and I also went, why isn't Amy questioning how the heck they made a miniature universe? Is it a hologram? Is it actually there? <laughs> in the manga she does say, is it a hologram? And if it's the Tyron system, how did you guys create it? I thought that's where our villains came from. So have we just condensed it down into miniature? If we looked closely, is Master Pharaoh 90 in there? Or is this a second one that you created that you're going to expand and use that expansion to take over the Earth? Because it doesn't really make sense. So, have we gone over everything? And uh, nope. We finally get an extremely clear indication that the professor knows entirely well who and what he's serving. So Oh yeah. Yeah. Also like when they go like that's a strange person, I'm like, uh duh, did you see his glasses? <laughs> oh, and that suddenly reminds me of that one scene with Chibi Moon and Hataru. Where she's like, suddenly an attack happens, and then she's like, ah, must touch Crystal! <laughs> and also how she's not quite like herself. There's a lot of foreshadowing in this episode between what Professor Tomoe says and Hotaru's reactions after both her fits. 
the one um, right before those schoolgirls pick on her and the one in front of Chibiusa. So much foreshadowing. I forgot to make a comment on the whole, <clears throat> did you just crush your pencil case? I also love how the girl's immediate reaction of, shoot! Just so much of that, oh my god. <sighs> but yeah, I would be scared of that too. Uh, you just crushed your pencil case. Can I help you by running away? <laughs> your solid metal pencil case. Also, mean girls, mean! For no reason, and okay, even if she's strange, she's the professor's daughter, do you want to get kicked out of the school? And she obviously has a medical problem. What? Which just makes you guys jerks. So do you have any more points to go over? I'm just going to say again, oh my god, all the foreshadowing here. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, there's something going on here. It's going to be interesting. I'm remembering little hints I've gotten over time of like, every time I've looked up Sailor Moon and certain hints I've gotten from other things. So kind of mildly spoiled on certain things. I just don't have the details of what those spoilers mean until I get to them. Then I go, oh, so that's where that comes from. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but this was good timing for you to draw the Garnet Rod since Pluto came back. Mm-hmm. Such a nice character. I had fun drawing that. So, we got all the foreshadowing in, we got all our little points in, so shall we wrap things up? Yes, because, you know, shiny, pretty, very close to the manga. What they changed was beneficial in streamlining the episodes and also making the characters even more badass, which is always plus. Oh yes, especially when they're female characters. These characters are so badass that they can leap out of 13-story windows. <laughs> Dive into a pool and surface perfectly fine and fully transformed. Well, I really liked both episodes. I can't wait for the next episodes. Ooh, just all this stuff in that little bit of, oh, new costume change. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal Season 3 episodes 31 and 32. Thanks for listening. If you want to be notified of new episodes, please subscribe. I would really enjoy that and it would encourage us to continue to do more episodes. If you enjoy Lux's art, you can find more on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you would like to support Lux's creative talent, you can check out his Patreon or check the link below for commission availability.